Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are doing an installment of the weekly meta breakdown where we look at the top performing decks on the MTG Arena ladder. The focus of today's video is going to be the standard best of one format. Uh, we have a big set coming to Arena tomorrow. Uh, that is Modern Horizons 3. So it will not be standard legal. It will not be alchemy legal. It will not be explorer legal. It will be only historic and timeless with some cards being pre banned in historic. Uh, before we jump into it, question for you standard players or people who enjoy standard more often than not. Are you going to be drafting at all with Modern Horizons? Are you going to be trying to branch out into some of the older formats to try out some of these powerful cards? I'm just curious of like if it's going to pull people into these older formats to see uh, or like bigger formats, see how, how it kind of evolves from there. So question for the day, but we'll get into the stats. As always, we get the data from GG companion tool that runs alongside Arena's client. Aggregates user win rates. I get a whole bunch of cool stats. Uh, link is in the video description for Untapped. I'll paste all these deck lists as well so you can lift and shift. Today we're going to be focusing on the top five winningness decks uh, between Diamond and Mythic Rank. Still pretty early in the season, so we're going to be looking at the, that pool. Uh, as well, I have try every week to find like off meta decks, if you would. Just um, decks that are doing well for like individuals, but maybe not like a huge sample size. Uh, usually into mythic rank so we found one this week it depends it's going to depend week to week really like what we get in terms of that stats but let's jump into it we're going to look at the popularity first of the day and then we'll look at the uh win rates themselves in terms of popularity boros convokes about 15 percent followed by mono red aggro and mono red prowess when you really look at it the mono red deck's probably a higher overall so some form of mono red is going to be hitting you about 18 percent of the time Prowess is a little bit more spell-based. Aggro is a little bit more creature-based in terms of density. Story's Control is going to come in at 7%. Mono White Humans at 6 Bulgari Mid at 56 And then just some of the various black-based decks. We do see like quite a big drop-off from Mono Red uh, from the latter reset with Convoke coming up. And then most of the decks are kind of flat in terms of that like 3 to 5% meta share that we see. So like I said, we're going to look uh, down in Mythic Rank June 3rd through the 10th, 34,000 games played. Uh, and we'll start looking at the highest win rate decks. Before we do, if you do enjoy this type of content, greatly appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button on YouTube. We're just shy of 13,000, trying to hit 15,000 by, uh, let's say, in the summer. Uh, but greatly appreciate it if you can, help support out the channel. So first highest win rate deck, Boros Convoke. So it's the most played, it's the, the highest win rate. The, the little shitters are getting the job done. So Convoke, really week to week, the changes are going to be some of the slots. So we see a couple copies of Lunark Veteran over the one mana Unearth Artifact. So Lunark Veteran helps in the mirror, helps against Mono Red. You're making a lot of creatures just incidentally gaining life and get you, you know, maybe three, four, five life over the course of the game could be enough in, in a race to kind of put you ahead. But you're making a bunch of cheap artifacts, you're gleeful demolitioning it for value. This version is also playing a regal bunicorn, just something to go big in addition to the, the go wide approach. We're seeing a split between the war leader's call and sanguine evangelist 3 3 as kind of your additional three drop payoffs. And then you have Imidane's recruiter to haste out your team. Knight Aaron Evios as another kind of convoke threat that gives you some value in terms of card advantage. We see Cavern of Souls, Inspiring Vantage. Uh, Myrex in the mana base. Moving on, we go to Mono Red Prowess. So 63%. Uh, so from la last week, they trimmed down the number of Godricks, which I think is correct. Uh, instead, they are playing a couple shocks, but just prowessy threats. So you have slick shots, you have code breakers, you have monastery Swiss spears. These scamps can just be used for like ping damage. And then anger could pump your, your creatures, give them trample, particularly good with like slick shot or Godric. Uh, Monstrous Rage, kind of same thing. A lot of cheap burn for interaction and Demonic Ruckus as an evasive threat that also gives Trample. Moving on, we go 5 color domain, 59%, with a couple cool cards. Well, a cool card. We got Make Your Own Luck domain. So, can we uh, plot away an Atraxa, uh, free cast Atraxa? This version's got a little bit more density in terms of cheaper sweepers. So, we, we don't see the Sunfalls in this version, just the Depopulate. So, they've replaced the Sunfalls with Depopulates for a cheaper sweeper while still maintaining the Farewell. Full set of Archangel of Wrath. You have a Wandering Emperor main, Sunset Revelry main. So, a lot of 
cheaper ways to gain life or to answer the board. Imidanes, when you cast the herd migration to kind of paste out your team that way they there. Split on King also lets your lands come into play untapped, which you play a number of triumphs in the deck. Play line is another cheap kind of removal option. So you have that at like just a shade under 60% in terms of win rates. You then go to teamer analyst, teamer control at 56%. So ramp uh, kind of strategy deck. So what you're trying to do with this is play these pseudo fetch lands, uh, evolving wild style, come into play, they sack themselves, gain your life, which is really good against aggressive decks. Uh, and you get to find a land with the aftermath analyst, you sack it, gets back all those lines to play that you would have sacked. So it just helps you kind of ramp. So it self enables a mill, but then those lines also then find more lines. So you pull through all the lines of your library. Uh, with Nissa out, it generates you mana for each time a line comes into play. So that lets you just kind of storm off. Second line drop, which is basically achieved through any of these kind of fetch lines, lets you seek an elf. So find you either another Nissa or another analyst. Dunking again to make your lines come to play untapped. And in terms of how you're winning the game, you either World Souls rage them for a whole bunch of damage, uh, or you can doppelgang a whole bunch of stuff and then just kind of beat them that way there. You can loop things with like Shigeki and Virtuous Strength as well, and then Ill Time Explosion as removal. When you're milling yourself, Memory Deluge also helps you find key cards of the deck. We then go to Banch Toxic, 56%. So it's basically blue white toxic with green for venerated rock priest. You're just going to be poking at your opponent. So Car chorus here, Skrelv here, venerated rock priest, Skrelv's hive gets you a whole bunch of counters. Jabo duelist as another way to kind of toxic your opponent. Finding uh, or bring the ending, not finding uh, as a counter spell. Serum snare is tempo like bounce plus you get a proliferate. Swirling Mist for protection. Both your creatures plays really nice with Venerate Rock Priest, put a bunch of counters or your opponents. Fading Hope for Bounce, and then an Aspirin Spray. Uh, kind of like a protection spell in the way, because if you're looking at like red based removal, it basically can outscale the removal amount of damage. Plus, it gives Flying, so for Evasion, and then Toxic 1 stacks. So, creatures Toxic 1, and you give it Toxic 1, then it becomes Toxic 2. Uh, your utility lines in the mana base of Myrex and Seed Core. I probably wouldn't play Bent Toxic and Best of 1, to be honest. It's worst matchups mono red, and mono red's gonna have a lot of cards. Even against Convoke, I can see it being a little cumbersome, just because they gum up the board a lot, and it's gonna be hard for you to attack in. And then, kind of the deck of the week, uh, kind of not for in, like rogue deck, rogue deck. That's what we're looking for eighteen and nine. They are up to mythic four eighty four. Uh, this is kind of a bant planeswalkers deck. So we have. Built around like Broker's Ascendancy, we have Ancient Cornucopia in here. High Noon stops all these aggro decks spewing out of a whole bunch of cards. So you get value there. Three Steps Ahead, Bring to Light. Uh, Aether Chandler is a tempo play. You have Shauna in here. So beginning of your end step, you can pay X if you do. Uh, draw X cards. X can't be greater than the amount of life you gain this turn. So you have that. Put counters on it, make it really big, draw a bunch of cards, but then you just got like a whole suite of planeswalkers. Archangel, Jace, Oko, Teferi, Wandering Emperor. So just a whole bunch of ways to gain life off your things. Uh Tamio can buy back stuff, a whole bunch of sweepers on the top end. So really interesting deck. Be curious to see like it in action. I could see it at times struggling a little against the likes of like Mono Red or stuff like that, but you got a lot of planeswalker threats. I'd probably play more Wandering Emperors. Uh, over something like Archangel Elspeth or even like the single Jace, probably. But um, interesting deck nonetheless. Not a huge sample size, but they're winning games at least in Mythic uh, up to 484, which is pretty, pretty nice. So that's it for the week. Let me know what you think. We'll catch you next time. And uh, we'll be back for more Modern Horizons probably in the next video. Thanks for watching.